Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number five, targeting the A minor chord. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to analyze Excel, pull out the guitar and start getting picky, picky, picky with it. You know, I've been picking for well over 40 years at this point, although only about 15 of those on the guitar. But I had an advantage from the start. I mean, who knew being a child naturally born with excessive booger production would be a benefit? But here we are. And now it's time for those years of pick and practice to pay off. Now it's time for all that struggle to pay off. Use all that fire inside you. So let's do this. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but did so in prior presentations. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need access to this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint because we'll simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us the notes, the scales, the chords that we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook, though, there's a bunch of tabs down below, including the OG orange tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section, mapping out the entire fretboard, giving us our entire musical alphabet in letter format, number format, combining letter and number format, providing a key that can be adjusted with this green cell to the scale that we want to focus on, adjusting the worksheets to that scale on the right, giving us then the notes in the scale, the chords constructions from the notes in the scale, interval information, and more. We then wanted to focus on the key of C, starting with the open position chord constructions in that key. So that's what these yellow tabs are down below. So over here, open positions, fret one through three, we mapped out the C major chord, chord one of uh, the C major scale. We then went to the four chord and we discussed it in detail, mapping it out in open position. We then went to the five chord, then back up to the minors, the two chord D minor, and then the three chord E minor, and then the six chord A minor, and then the diminished seven chord. We then wanted to jump from the uh, position on frets one through three up to the middle of the guitar and learn that not with chord shapes, but rather with our scale shapes. So we discussed how this, these shapes fit together. And then we discussed the major and pentatonic and major scales and how they fit together. And then we looked at how we could connect our new shape in the middle of the guitar that we learned in scale format to the shape that we learned in the open position in chord format, focusing in on first the C chord and then jump into the F chord, and then the G chord, and then we went to the D minor chord, and then we went to the E minor chord, and now finally, we're going to go to the A minor uh, chord. So this is where we left off last time. So what I'm going to do is copy this worksheet over. I'm going to hold down Control and left click and drag this to the right. And then I'm going to double click on our worksheet and I'm going to say that this is going to be an A now. And then I'm just going to adjust our worksheet here uh, for the uh, A minor. Quick recap before we do that. Remember that up top, this is going to be our pentatonic shape. And then we have down below, we have the pentatonic shape is on top of, is how I would think of it, on top of the major shape. So basically we put down below... On the base, you can see below everything that's colored right here, you can think of it as being blue, those being the notes of the major scale. And then on top of that, we put the green notes, which are going to be the uh, pentatonic notes. And then on top of that, we put this scale. Now we're going to move those scale notes down to here and make it the A minor scale. So let's move it down to here. And I'm going to then highlight this whole thing and I'm just going to adjust the uh, formatting. So I'm going to go to the home tab, style, conditional formatting. Let's manage the rules. I'm going to double click on the green one here and delete this. And we're going to say this is going to be an A. So that's going to be the one. And then I'm going to, I'm going to double click on the red, delete this. This will be the C. And then I'm going to double click on the yellow and delete this. And this is going to be the E. So we'll say, okay. 
and OK. And it'll change everything up top, hopefully. I think it did. And then I'm going to just format paint down here. I'm going to put this here, format paint uh, this one to here. And then the C, I'm going to format paint that one to here. And then the E, I'm going to format paint that one to here. And then I'm going to format paint these to not be colored anymore. And there, is, there we are. Now this is going to be the A minor. So in open position, we saw when we looked at the chords over here, the A minor uh, basically looks like this. I kind of, it's kind of a messy thing. I should fix that. It looks like that in open position. So I can reformat that over here and say, okay, the A minor is going to be looking like that. This is where our fingers go there, there, and, and then here. And then this A rings out. You could ring out that E, but you might not ring out the E so you get more of an A uh, sound with it. So there we have it. So I get these boxes. I got too many boxes. Okay, let's pull these down. I, I'm just going to delete these ones because there's a lot of boxes. I feel like we have too many going on here. Now, I also want to think about the relative minor. So in this case, the mode would be the Aeolian mode or the relative minor of uh, the A minor. So that's going to be on the right. Let's pull that in. I'm going to hide from AT over to the minor. Right click and hide that stuff. So we could then think of it as we have the six or we can think of it as it being the one of the relative minor. Now, obviously, of all the modes, the Aeolian or the relative minor is going to be, you know, the most important mode that we want to be picking up. So let's go ahead and then I'm going to hi I'm going to uh, see full screen. So this and this is as big as it can go on the full screen without losing info. OK, I think that is good. So then over here. Uh, we could then first thing we might do is target the A's so I can see my A's because I'm playing an A minor in open position and then possibly moving over here to the A's. So there's where the A's are at. Now, quick recap. If we pull out the trusty guitar here, it, we're still if we can think of ourselves in the key of C, just like any of these other chords that we constructed, in which case the A might be something that we're just switching to. Right. So if I'm in C or any of the other modes, right? But if I'm saying C is my tonic, how can I make C the tonic? I could just start playing on it, right? So here's the C, and then I could go F maybe, and then go to the A, maybe to a G, and then back to the C. So if I do that, then I'm kind of trying to make the C the tonic by basically playing around the C. Now, the other thing we can do is make the six the tonic, or the central point, what we're going to be playing around with the with the whole thing is kind of hovering around and it should be pretty easy to do that because in like a western music the the minor mode the aeolian mode is very very common so our ears are basically used to doing that and so we could start with an a minor and then go to like a c f and back to an a minor and the a minor should hopefully kind of sound like home now we can think about that as though we're playing all the notes in the key of C, but we're just making the six like the central point. Uh, but this one in particular, the minor mode, you probably want to also be able to convert in your mind to see it as the one because the minor is such a, is so common of something to be playing in. It's also really useful when you see it as the one because it, it's just as easy as like on the majors, the one, four, five are the majors. And if you convert the six to the one, so now you're playing in a minor, the one, uh, the one, four, five are the minors. So that one, four, five are like the easy things to kind of practice playing because they're going to be, if you're in a major scale, the major chords. And if you're in the minor scale, they're going to be uh, the minor chords. Now, the other thing, just to note here, the, the thing that's great about the minor, that's not always the case with the other modes that we played is that when we play this six, we are using the, we could use the pentatonic scale exactly. So if we know the pentatonic scale, 
all these notes will fit in the pentatonic scale. Whereas we saw that many other th of the other modes that we looked at, they're not going to fit in there because you constructed it. We constructed these with seven notes. We can we used the seven note scale to construct all of these chords. So you would think any of the chords that have a four or a seven in it are not going to fit in the pentatonic because those are two notes removed. So you can think of the pentatonic that we usually use then as being related to either the one, uh, the major, or its relative minor, the six of the major, and all those notes fit in there. Otherwise, if you're in some other chord, you can think of it as, as we discussed before, like you're in the pentatonic, but if you're playing like an F, then you might add the F. So a lot of people think that way and it works quite well, right? You, see, you have your pentatonic shape, which is probably the most versatile shape that you can use. And then you're just gonna say, I'm just gonna adjust it and add the F, you know, when, I, when I'm on that chord. And that way you're using all the notes that are probably the most versatile notes and you can just kind of adjust it. That's one way to think of it. Or you can think of it as basically you're playing in a major, uh, you can switch your mind to the relative major, which includes all the other notes, which will have all of these notes and the chords in it. But with the with the related minor, don't even have to worry about that because all the notes are going to be in uh, the related minor. So we're going to think of ourselves basically as though we're in the minor or playing around the six, however, however whichever way you want to think about it, so that we can start practicing that chord, the minor, uh, the minor chord. So the first way we might do that is, is then to say, well, how can I move from this shape to get into this shape? And we can target then the A's, right? Now with this, with this shape, it actually starts on an A. That's why a lot of guitarists really, including me, right? You just learn the A first, because you learn this shape oftentimes in position five, and you tend to play it in A minor because it starts on an A minor, and most people start learning these scales by just playing them from the top string to the bottom string, which might not be the most musical way to do it, but that's what most people do. And so that means that they're, they're typically playing in an A minor because that's what they're starting and ending on all the time. So here's your A, here's your A, and here's your A, right? So then if I was to play over here, I can play this, and I'm going to try to follow one of my fingers in. I think this finger is always a nice, easy one to follow in because it's going to lead you perfectly into your shape over here generally. So you're in the four positions and then I can walk my way into one of these A's. I'm probably going to target that one the most because it's right in the middle, right? So I can do that. So there's that A, boom, and he kind of closes it out. Then I can go back on over here maybe. I might follow this string in. an A. Here's a power chord. Remember, you can always make a power chord. Even if you don't know exactly everything else that you're doing, you can usually take this note and the one down to the right. That's the first and the fifth. I could do that here. I could do that here. I can't do it here because it's the bottom string, but I could, I could take the one above it and that's still kind of like a power chord right there. That's the other way you can think about it. There's always a fifth uh, above it as well. So, you can follow any of these fingers in. If I follow, if I follow this finger in, it takes me right to the A. If I go all the way up to the A. If I follow this finger in, it takes me to a D. So I'm just following. I'm just going boom, taking this finger into a D and then playing it. You could take your hands off, so it's not like you have to follow something in. But when I take my hands off, remember, you're probably going to then go. You're probably going to play it like a scale that so that uh, so you want to be able to when you take your hands off. Target something else that you're going to do something different so you can start playing it, not in just a scale. And my the idea would be that you're trying to give yourself some leeway to be creative, to do what you want to do, but also have some boundaries around it. It's kind of like if you're playing, if you're doing poetry or a song or something like that, it's not like you can do just anything. You want to have some boundaries and then see how creative you can be within uh, the boundaries. And that's usually going to be uh, useful. So the next thing we can do also just before I forget, realize that with all the minors, you have these open strings. So the minors that are in 
the C major uh, chords or the C major scale are going to be the D minor, the E minor, the A minor, which means you have these open notes right here. So that, that's another reason the A minor is a, is a fun thing to play, because if I'm playing down here, I have that open A. And I can always use that as my bass when I'm up here. So if things are, if I don't even know where the A is, I can keep on playing this A up top and it'll still sound like I'm in the key of A because it's kind of like there's a bass beat on top of it that's always going to keep you in, in that place, right? So I can do that. I can do my cheating little bit up here. I can finger like this, which I kind of like to do just for rhythm. And I can just play like these two notes going from here to here and reaching for these other notes. So I can just from this one finger right there, I have I can explore how many things I can do and always go back to the A, right? Because the A is the open note. So I can play these two. I can take my finger off. I can reach up here into my pentatonic position. So now I'm, I'm reaching up to pick up that G and now I'm in that position. I can hit the one I can hit the one below it which is another A right if I want to so it's kind of fun just to noodle around there and then I can of course bring my whole finger up with just one finger hitting the open A to when I get to the double stop two A's because this is open this open A and that A and then go back so that kind of stuff is kind of fun to do that uh, and then you can think, okay, well, what are the chord shapes over here in my new position? Can I make a chord that is an A chord? And if we analyze it, we can say, okay, where's uh, the A looks like this. Da, da, and da, da. We're going to say it looks, oh, what did I do? It looks like this here and then like this, right? So those are those. that's the shape that would probably first uh, come to mind. It's going to look like that. And if you were to analyze that in open position, you're going to say, okay, that's going to be kind of like an E shape, an E minor shape, right? So if we played the E minor over here, we did, we did this in our open positions, it would look like that. If I switch that to a bar chord, then I'd have to go, okay, I'd have to play it like that, right? I'd put my finger on the bar. And if I move that bar up, I'd switch these two fingers to bring it up to here. So that's that's basically our standard bar shape chord. Now just to just to see how the cage system kind of works on the minors, if we start off in open position with the A minor, we're over here, then the next shape would be the G. Now the G is something that isn't like one of the first shapes that you're going to be learning oftentimes in open position, but you can kind of construct it and see what it would look like because here's the major so if i take uh the g major over here and just go okay it looks like this and then i flat uh the third it would it's hard to play right but i can flat this over here and it would be something like that right so I would take this shape and then flat the third to get to the minor so if i'm going back on over here and i'm going to say okay well if i'm looking at my a here then the next shape if I go to my A up top, this would be the G major kind of shape. And if I flat the third, it would look like this, something like this. And then if I wanted to, so this would be the, this would be the one. And then this would be the third. And then I'd reach back to the fifth, which is right here, because if it was in open position, these would be barred. So if I want to get a fifth, I'd have to do that. Now it's kind of an awkward shape to see or to play, but it's pretty easy to play like this, where you get the where you get the first and the third. It's not too bad to play that, especially if you have stronger uh, or larger hands than I do. But uh, but it's useful to kind of see it so that you can see what's going on with how the all of the shapes are tagged together. And it's also useful to be able to arpeggiate uh, that kind of shape as well. So you can play it like one string at a time when you're basically uh, noodling around and then you're going from a G to the E, which is what we're on here. So now that's how we get up to 
our uh, E shape that looks like this. Now that bar chord is not too bad to play, but it's actually in some ways harder than the major bar chord where you hold down the string because uh, with this bar chord, you really got to get to that C and that's right where like your finger kind of pops out a little bit with the knuckle. So sometimes you don't get that C, which is the only third that's in this shape. So that so you want to make sure that you bar that off straight you, and if you play the whole bar chord. And another thing is a lot of people put their finger like this because they want just the tip of their finger here because they're used to playing like that. And so they, and if you do that, then it might be harder to, you're going to get a, a space here. So what, so what you do is you want to lay down this finger and put as much meat over the top as you need to to get a shape. You don't have to put the tip of your finger on the top string, right? Because you're trying to bar off with like the ridge. You also kind of want to lean back possibly a little bit to get that bar in uh, close to the close to the fret. However, you may not need the whole the whole bar shape oftentimes, right? Because we only we only need three notes out of it. So let's deconstruct the the bar shape here. So we could say one of the most common ways to play it would be like this, right? So we can do something uh, like this and and then that's a pretty comfortable shape. Now it's a little bit inverted because you don't have the A on the lowest one here, but it's still pretty easy to play. And some people like to play the, like to work with their thumb up top. So you can actually still grab that A up top and it's usually a more comfortable position and you're more likely to get to that C, of course, because you're hitting the C with your most dependable finger, the good old pointer finger here. So uh, that's what I use a, a lot because that's just nice and easy to play, right? So if you're down here and I'm targeting this C or this A, I can play my A down here. And then you can end it right there. And then work your way back and forth. Instead of targeting just that note, you can target that whole little shape and you can use your finger up here if you want to get that bass in there. If you hit an open E, that's fine too. I usually mute that string or try to try to uh, play it if I want to play it. And so there, so that's going to be a, a useful shape uh, in my opinion. And then down here, you also have the inversion. So you could play just these three, but if you just play those three, it's an A, but it's going to be higher and register and the, and you have to make sure you ring out that bottom one because that's actually the root here's the root here's the fifth here's the third so it's going to give you a different sound higher in tone if you're playing with a band or something that might be useful because it's got it doesn't have as low of the bass notes in there and you can still get to that it's kind of an, an interesting sound if you go to this d you pull up like that d shape you pull in that f for a triangle type shape and then you drop it back to the to the A there and then after you play that you can always go back to this shape so I'm just pivoting from the bottom of the bar chord because remember this whole thing is just being deconstructed from that bar chord and then to the middle of the bar chord by playing these ones and then to the top of the bar chord if you want to thumb that that top bit so that's going to be it that's often a useful construction and then you could build it up here. Here's my A and here's my E. And then there's going to be my C. Again, this is another inversion, but it's going to be a, a heavier sounding one, meaning the root is on the bottom. And remember, there's always a fifth, whether it be major or minor above the root. And then you've got the third, which is two strings up and one to the right. So now the, the root is on the bottom here, right? So I can play something like that gives you kind of that heavier type of sound. So if I was to be noodling, I could be up here, A. There's that A on the bottom with these strings, with these three strings. And then I can noodle to the middle. Here's the A in the middle. And then I can noodle up to this one and back. Top. And then, of course, when you're playing this A here, sometimes it's easy. 
if you don't play the full bar to just see it as a power chord, right? So I could, the full, the full bar would be like this, and I'd have to bar it off to get down to there. But if you're like, oh, that's hard, and then you don't play it at all, you, you could still play it because you can, you can play just the power chord, but you're not going to get the feeling of that, of the full thing, because you're not going to get to that C down, down here. Now, one, another useful little thing with the A, which is useful, is that you could get to C on this side. So notice that the minors are, the third is a nice distance away. With a major third, it's a little bit of a reach. But with a minor third, it's just the four frets away. So notice when I'm playing a power chord, wherever you have an A here, you've got your fifth down here, and then the third is four frets up. So that's, so you can kind of play basically your A minor by just switching your arpeggiating. And that's basically what we're doing over here when I, when I, uh, go from when I kind of do my cheater pattern on the A minor and I'm going from here, open A to the C, right? The, if I have the, the E and the open A, that's a power chord. And then I'm closing it out with the C. You can think of it as going to the C. Uh, this is like a part of the C major, or you can think about it as completing the A minor. So when I'm down here playing these two, just these two strings. So that's the power chord and then adding the, the third right there. So you're basically doing that here if you play just the power chord. There, now I'm adding the third. You could do that anywhere, I could do it here. Anywhere there's an A, right? You could do, you could do that same that same little shuffle pattern so that again i, I kind of like that in the minors because it's easier to do that in the minors because the third is more reachable than when you're on a major a major third so, so. so you could do that kind of kind of stuff on it okay so so there are those and then of course you could reach up uh this way right that which isn't fully in the shape but we talked about how you could basically build whoop you could reach up backwards this way or you can play it like this right and just get the the root and the third Okay, so now then of course we could target other notes in here. So if I picked up some, if I wanted to target the C, we have to be careful on the C because we don't want it to make it sound like it's in the key of C major, but the C is also in the minor. It's the third of the minor. So our C's are here and here and here. So if I was going open position, I could noodle in. There's a C and then I can end it there's a C and then I can end it with this a which is you know this from here here and here there's a C maybe I go back to the a over here there's a C there's my a minor here so I'm going back home to that a minor there's a C going back home to there. So then we can say, what if I play the E, the fifth? So there's a fifth, there's a fifth. So I can say my E's are going to be here and here. So I can be like, okay. Uh, there's, a, there's my E right there. And then I can go... There's an E, power chord A, adding the third. Here's my full A, A minor. There's my E, there's my A minor. 
E, back to the A minor and open. And then we could choose something that's outside entirely, like an F, for example, but that's not even in the pentatonic. So you're getting a little bit risky to pick, you know, like an F, like maybe something like a D might be a, a safer move. <laughs> so we could say, let's do the safer move here. And so the Ds are going to be here and here. So if I was like... There's a D. There's a D. There's a D. Back to my A minor. There's a D. A minor. D. A minor. A minor pentatonic. Adding that third. A minor. On the bar. So, so it's just some things that we can uh, noodle around with there. So, and again, I, I think that the A minor, like, is, is notice just to see the shuffle pattern here with the, with these. Now that you can see the one, the four, and the five. So we we have this like if you did this little shuffle pattern here, you can alternate between the one, four, five, in the minors, right? So if I did this shuffle pattern here. <laughs> I can do the same thing by going down then to the D, there's the one. Now I'm gonna to go to the four, shuffling back between the power chord and completing the chord, right? There's the D, there's the A, and then I'm shuffling to the F. So I can do that down here. I'm just playing two strings and just going back and forth. And then I can go back to do that to the A, to the C, or closing out the chord. And then I can do that with the E, because if I go back up to the E, you have that open E going from the power chord, closing it out with the G. And then back to the, usually the pattern, if you're playing the, the kind of normal pattern, it would go back to the D, and then back to the A. But you don't have to play the normal kind of pattern. You could, you could just do whatever you want, but but you're just playing the one, four, five when you do that, which is kind of fun to do that we've learned all those. And you could. See, I just followed my, str I followed the string in and ended it with that A right here, right? ending it I'm just putting a little extension on that to 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 this string out here okay so that's the general thing now we could before we went and said well with all these other chords we then went back and said well why don't I look at the relative the relative minor D the relative minor E we don't need to do that with the A because uh, because we're looking at the minor in other words if I constructed something from a major scale, like the C major scale, the one chord is gonna be in the C major. When I go to the two chord, we can think about playing it, but then we would be playing in a mode, the Dorian mode, or we can switch our entire mind to be switching, to be playing it in, uh, in, in a, a D minor, because that's such a, D minor is such a common thing to do, and we're playing a D minor uh, chord here. And same with the E, you know, all, all of the other ones here. But when we're looking at the six, this is, you know, the, the minor uh, construction. So when I think about this shape that we're looking at up top, then we can use this same shape. We're in the same shape, right? I can use the same shape and think about it as a C or an A minor. But when you do that, when you think about it as a C, you don't want to be starting and playing it with the top to bottom with the A. You kind of want to be thinking there's my tonic on the C and I'm playing the scale up and back from the C. In other words, you might play the same scale and think in your mind, am I playing in the key of C? And if you are, then you should be starting and stopping on a C, all right? And if you're playing it in the key of A, then you kind of want to think in your mind that you're starting and stopping in the key of A. They're all the same notes, but you want to be, you, you kind of want to be targeting 
uh, the, and so you can see you can see what scale you're in even as you're doing you're kind of uh, you're just you're practicing up and down the scale because then you're not thinking I'm just playing a scale I'm thinking I'm playing the scale and I'm focusing I'm thinking of it as a minor or uh, the C major.